There are 88 constellations in the night sky, some of which were created by mythical stories told by the Greeks and the Romans. During this piece, you will be introduced to the instruments of the orchestra as they take turns with the musical telling of the myths behind some of the constellations. We begin as night is falling and the stars are appearing. Perseus, the hero. This son of Zeus was sent to kill Medusa, a creature so ugly that anyone who looked upon her was instantly turned to stone. In this movement, Perseus will be represented by the trumpet. Listen as we hear him returning triumphantly from battle. cut off Medusa's head, her blood dripped into the sea, and Pegasus, the winged horse, arose from the foam. Our next instrument is the violin. In this movement, the violin will portray Pegasus flying through the air as he carries Perseus back to home. Andromeda and Cetus, the princess and the sea monster. On his journey home, Perseus happened upon the princess Andromeda, who was chained to the cliffs at the edge of the sea, and was about to be sacrificed to Cetus, a terrible sea monster. Struck by her beauty, Perseus decided to save Andromeda and take her hand in marriage. As Cetus was about to attack, Perseus removed Medusa's head from the bag, causing him to turn to stone and sink to the bottom of the sea. Here, Andromeda will be represented by the flute. And Cetus will be represented by the double bass.
Hercules, the strong man. Even as a baby, this half-mortal son of Jupiter was stronger than any man alive. Hercules was famous for performing the twelve labors, feats of incredible strength and courage. Hercules will be represented by the horns. And the timpani drums. Hydra, the serpent. The second task of Hercules was to kill Hydra, a many-headed monster. For each head that Hercules cut off, two more grew in its place. Hercules killed the beast by cutting off the heads and then cauterizing the stumps before more heads could grow back. The last head was immortal, which he cut off and placed under a gigantic stone. Hydra will be represented by the viola. and the cello. Lepus, the hare. One of Orion's favorite types of prey was the hare. This is why Lepus can be found under the feet of Orion in the night sky. Listen as we hear the sound of the piccolo, imitating the leaps and bounds of Lepus scurrying away from the hunter. Scorpius, the hunter, and the scorpion. Orion
Orion once boasted that no beast could kill him. In order to teach Orion a lesson, the goddess Hera sent a scorpion to sting him. Orion fought the scorpion and was fatally stung before smashing it with his club. To honor their battle, they were placed in the sky, but on opposite sides, so they would never encounter one another again. In this movement, Orion will be represented by the horn, which we have previously heard, and the scorpion will be represented by the oboe. Delphinius the Dolphin. The Greek poet Arian was sent by the king of Corinth to Italy to take part in a contest. After winning the prize, he chartered the ship home, but the ship's crew decided to throw him overboard in order to steal his treasure. As a last request, Arian asked to play a song on his lyre. The music charmed a dolphin that was passing by, and Arian threw himself into the sea. Thinking he was dead, the sailors went on to Corinth, but Arian carried swiftly by the dolphin reached Corinth first. When the sailors arrived, the king had them executed, and the poet's prize was returned to him. The gods placed the dolphin in the sky as a reward. Listen now to the sound of the dolphin moving through the water, represented here by the clarinet. Gemini, the twins. Our next two instruments are the glockenspiel and the xylophone. They will be representing Gemini, also known as the twins, Castor and Pollux. Pollux was immortal and Castor was not. When Castor died, Pollux begged Zeus to let him die as well so that he could be with his brother. Since Pollux was immortal, this was impossible. Zeus decided to compromise and let the brothers spend half of their time in the underworld and half of their time with the gods. This is why they are seen above the horizon half the time and are beneath the horizon the other half. Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, the Great Bear and the Little Bear. 
When Zeus fell in love with the maiden Callisto, his jealous wife, Hera, turned Callisto into a bear. Years later, Callisto's son, Arctos, was hunting bear in the forest and was about to shoot an arrow at his own mother. To save them, Zeus turned Arctos into a bear as well and placed both him and his mother in the heavens. Today, we refer to the constellations Ursa Major and Ursa Minor as the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. In this movement, the orchestra's two bassoons will portray the two bears. The night sky. Just as each of the constellations does not appear alone in the night sky, so each instrument of the orchestra is not heard in isolation. When viewed as a whole, the night sky is breathtaking. When heard as a whole, the orchestra can also have quite an impact. Listen now as each of the themes from the previous movements are played again, this time by the entire orchestra. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you.